let's not kid ourselves. It's not a legal matter per se. It's a political first and foremost. What the settlers are doing, they are using legal tools in order to execute their own political strategy, intentional, deliberate attempt to make a two states a solution to render it impossible. Now, from a legal point of view, yes, some of these houses were owned before 1948 by Jewish families, and I don't think many would, would dispute it. But at the same time, so much of the property was owned inside Israel, not in the occupied territories, inside Israel, proper, within the Green Line, by the 750,000 original refugees. And I don't think they, any one of them, or the descendant of the refugees, will find any remedy in Israeli courts to reclaim their property. So the ownership is there, but this time actually to look at it from a political so now it will go back to the to the Supreme Court, and and I hope they will reconsider and understand that in the balance of interest, yes, there might be ownership there, but the result of it might be much worse in political terms, in terms of of, of violence. And again, to to say that there is status quo, there is no real status quo in Jerusalem. Or what is there is an occupation which 40% of the population has no rights or very little rights, and 60% of the Jewish population has the rights, and the Palestinians have not the same access to, to justice, to the courts in Israel, as the Jewish population. The political motivation of these settlers that have their supporter in government, or at least those in government that don't want to clash with the interests of the settler, is to make a two-state solution based on Jerusalem as both capital of Israel and Palestine completely impossible. What they try to encircle by joining together the Jewish neighborhood, whether it's in Silwan, that there is a very similar uh, situation, or, or, or in uh, Sheikh Jarrah. At the same time, to exclude from Jerusalem, like the Shuafat and the refugee came to create demography which favors the Jewish population in Jerusalem. And when they finish to encircle the whole city with Jewish a neighborhood, that will make it almost, and cut it by the way from Bethlehem, that will make it almost impossible to have a continuity between Palestine, a Palestinian state, if it ever happens, and its capital in, in Al-Quds, in East Jerusalem. I think Israel a, is playing a very dangerous game. I think Israel in its complaints, say, I would even say arrogant, think that they can do whatever they like, whether it's in in Jerusalem or the entire West Bank, they feel that with the with the normalization of relations in other parts in the Middle East, there are nothing what to fear. I would say two things: a, the occupation also changed the Israel uh, uh, the Israel society in a way that it's a, it's it's much worse than it used to be, including the political instability and other aspect of the Israeli society. Not that it should worry the Palestinians as such, but it's something that the Israeli society should really worry about its own character and how it has lost since 1967 its democratic character. B, yeah, this can, whatever in Jerusalem, as a microcosmos of the conflict as a whole, can lead to clashes in, in Jerusalem, which will get even worse than what we've seen in the last 48 hours, even in the last few weeks. It can lead to a war in, in, in Gaza, and we saw in 2000 that this was the trigger for the second intifada, not the cause of it, but definitely a, a, a trigger. So this is something that the Israeli leadership to take into account. But when I say leadership, where is the leadership in Israel right now? Uh, the supposed uh, prime minister is busy with, with dealing with his corruption case and try to stay in power and out of jail. The rest are trying to form a